So my name is Peter Voorhees. I'm from the Levine Cancer Institute in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm going to talk today about a very interesting study that we've been running over the course of the last several months. So everybody's excited about daratumumab or Darzalex for the treatment of multiple myeloma. It's been available as monotherapy for a long time now uh, with clear activity in patients with fairly resistant disease. Um, and as time goes on, we see these combination therapies with Darzalex in combination with Revlimid and dexamethasone, palmolist and dexamethasone, velcade and dexamethasone, all showing uh, incredible activity uh, compared to the uh, standard of care uh, control arms of those uh, trials. And there'll be very interesting data uh, later in the ASH meeting, uh, this go around, looking at a combination of melphalan, prednisone, and velcade, which is used a lot outside the United States with or without Darzatlex. And what you'll see in that pr uh, presentation, which is a late breaking abstract, is that the addition of Darzalex makes a big difference, as it has with other regimens as well. We are also very interested in bringing Darzalex to newly diagnosed patients, and that's the subject of our study. So specifically, we're looking at the combination of Revlimid, Velcade, Dexamethasone, and Darzalex for newly diagnosed uh, transplant uh, eligible myeloma patients. So as a first step, what we did is a safety run-in uh, to be sure that there weren't going to be any unexpected side effects when we combined Darzalex with Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone. We felt fairly optimistic that it should be okay based on the wealth of data that we have in combination with Revlimid, Dexamethasone, and Velcade, Dexamethasone, but we really wanted to know what would happen when you put them all together. And importantly, since this is a newly diagnosed patient population who will ultimately ultimately be going on to autologous stem cell transplantation, we wanted to be absolutely sure that there were no issues with regards to stem cell mobilization and collection with this particular combination. Because as it turns out, uh, there is some CD38 expression on uh, bone marrow precursor cells, CD38 being the target for Darzalex. So uh, what I presented a couple of nights ago as a poster presentation was the results of our 16 patient safety run-in. So the way that this works is that patients are treated initially with four cycles of Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone using a standard dose and schedule. We're using the three-week uh, three cycle version of RVD in this particular case. And with those first four uh, cycles of induction therapy, the Darzalex is given once a week, every week. So you're looking at um, 12 doses of weekly Darzalex. Uh, patients then go on to stem cell mobilization and collection using Nupagen and Mozabil if needed. Um, if patients have trouble with stem cell collection, they're allowed to receive cytoxin followed by Nupagen as a backup option. Uh, then patients go on to their uh, standard high-dose melphalan autologous stem cell transplant. After they recover from that, they get two cycles of consolidation with Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone with the addition of Darzalex. The Darzalex at this point is just given on the first day of the cycle, and then patients transition to Revlimid and Darzalex maintenance therapy. Uh, so I'm happy to report of those first 16 patients, there were only uh, three of what we would call uh, dose-limiting toxicities, more serious uh, adverse events, you know, that would, uh, you know, uh, make us more cautious. So specifically, there was a patient who had what we call grade three fatigue or more more severe fatigue with their first cycle. We did have a patient develop uh, pneumonia during the first cycle as well, which is not unusual um, in a newly diagnosed uh, myeloma population. And then there was one patient who uh, developed a gastroenteritis. Fortunately, even though these patients uh, suffered more severe side effects you know, with the uh, first cycle of therapy, the other 13 patients did not. And of those three patients that did, they were able to resume therapy uh, without any difficulties. And I'm happy to report that not a single patient in the safety run-in had to stop treatment because of side effects. So as far as the stem cell mobilization issue is concerned, uh, that has not been a problem. So all 16 patients were able, to, uh, were able to successfully undergo stem cell mobilization and collection. There was just a single patient who had enough cells collected for one transplant when the uh, hope had been to collect enough for two transplants. So that was the only uh, issue that we ran into, which is not uh, out of the expected you know, norm uh, for this group of patients. Um, as far as other side effects are concerned, as far as the more severe side effects, they were largely um, blood count related, so uh, lower white blood cell count, um, platelets, and occasionally anemia. But as far as 
you know, the other kinds of side effects, fatigue, gastrointestinal side effects, et cetera, all of those were very manageable and lower grade in severity. And typically what you would expect with Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone, it didn't seem that the Darzalex otherwise had a lot of additional side effects to the regimen. Um, we're still in the process of determining, you know, the depth of response for all of these patients. I'm happy to report that every single patient in the safety run-in responded to therapy, and the vast majority of patients, if not all of them, are at least in a VGPR. Yeah, I mean, I think that the nice thing about the monoclonal antibodies is that there are more targeted uh, therapy. Yes, there's CD38 expression on other cell types, but not a lot of additional cell types. So I think when you look at all the phase three data that are out there, I think it's clear that adding Darzalex to a Revlimid proteasome inhibitor combination will make the white blood cell count drop a bit more severe. It will have some impact on platelets as well to a greater degree than without the Darzalex. Uh, I think we do see a little bit more respiratory tract infection, both upper as well as lower respiratory tract infections. So it's not completely without side effects. I don't want to give the impression that that's the case. But in the grand scheme of things, it is very well tolerated and uh, very effective as well. Now, because of the fact that the uh, safety run-in went according to plan, um, we've gone on to uh, launch a randomized phase two study, which is basically looking at exactly what I just described head-to-head -head with the standard of care, which is the four cycles of RVD, transplant, the two cycles of post-transplant RVD consolidation, followed by Revlimid maintenance therapy. And the primary endpoint on that particular trial is stringent complete response, but we're going to be looking at MRD, minimal residual disease testing as well, progression-free survival, overall survival, additional safety metrics, uh, et cetera. And I'm happy to report that out of the 200 patients that we need to enroll to the study, we've enrolled at this point approximately 120, uh, but we're certainly very excited about the combination and we're very much looking forward to finishing enrollment uh, of the study so we can get it to a broader group of patients more quickly. Music